My favorite thing to do in my free time is cheat. Evolutions, not in anything else. I'm not a horrible person. How, how dare you think I'm one of them? Back on topic, today we're going to be cheating evolution with the new Pidov. It has the emergency evolution ability where if it has 30 HP or less, you can just search your deck for an unpheasant or unpheasant EX and it goes straight onto it. Pretty simple, right? So it's only as good as the unpheasants around. And the one for Temporal Forces is the one that we're playing because not only does it have the opposing wings attack, which is 70 plus discarding, or sorry, should I say, putting back into the hand to energy from the active Pokemon. It also has the boundless power with a reversal energy hitting straight 180, kind of serving as this pseudo Lux Ray which doesn't need you to be behind on prices in order to get it out. But this isn't the main attacker, because let's be real, 70 damage and then the off 180 really isn't that good anymore. So we're putting it in a Zorak deck, of course, because you need to put it down with the Gapejaw Bog, that being the Pidove, to allow it to get to that 30 HP, so you are just kind of already setting yourself up for a Zorak. And it actually allows Unpheasant to act as a backup attacker in Zorak that is single prize, something that Zorak didn't really have before. Yes, you had the Dodrios, but that's just a little bit slow. This is a whole new angle to play Zorak. So let's get in some games and see how it fares. And a quick shout out to our sponsors, PDCGL Store, where you can buy codes to bling out your decks using code FDW for 5% off and whatnot. But you can buy and sell collectible Pokemon cards live. And they're even giving you £10 off your first purchase using my special link. Links to all sponsors are in the description below. But for now, let's get going. Whoa, free mulligans. I was about to do a whole pun, a whole joke about how terrible my hand is. I was going to go with David Attenborough in that, you know. And here we see a terrible hand thriving in its natural habitat. That sounds like Dumbledore. What is bro doing? All right, let's just get Zorak down. Still not happy with the hand, though. I can't lie. It's just kind of wild. And I'm actually playing Incineroar. This is why I'm enjoying casual right now, because... You just get the wacky things that are fun. No more Charizard. Remember when we was playing like uh, well, three videos in a row and it was just like almost fully Charizard the entire time? No more of that. We'll let the boring people be boring. And in that that's basically me just saying we'll let the good people be good. Let's be real. Boring equals good because in order to be good, you have to be consistent and you have to be reliably consistent, which means you can't do anything really with much flair. You have to just be non-stop constant and that can be seen as boring and uh, that's how i like to see the world if you're good at something you're just boring to me <laughs> oh i can't even set up a straight face all right there's, there's best buddy puffin and you know what's funny is this is a very strange matchup because we actually need a full bench and they want us to have a full bench but we can also take one of KOs on them, or especially with Max Bell. So it's like, it's strange. They can want to KO us, but I think we, can we narrowly avoid it? I think, it, is it 240 plus burn? So I think they actually get exactly what they need for a one KO on me with the Incineroar. So it's just, it's just weird. I don't know how to navigate this, but it's kind of the fun of it, right? Nonetheless, uh, Jesus Christ, just, j just, j ah! all of my damage management is just in my hand, ready to be discarded by this Zorak. So that's great news. Also have to attach the maximum belt. That's great news. Phantom Star, get rid of the hand. Try and give me something a bit more worthwhile. Okay, now we're talking. There's a Squibbit. There we go. We'll get a Bidoof down. There we go. We do have the other reversal, which I'm just going to attach. Also tempted to instead Nest Ball for the Bidoof, but... Let's let's not go there. Ticking Curse is doing straight 200, which is nice. The Incineroar isn't doing anything crazy just yet. Actually, I need to think about what actually I need for the. Okay, it's fine. Don't worry. Right, I, I can hold ball for Pidov next turn if things go south, and at least get rid of the energy on Incineroar. That could be good. The disruption side of the Unpheasant could come into play, but we'll see. Defiance Ban. Uh oh. Did wait. Oh, hold on. They TM the evolution, right? Did they TM two Bibarrow? Oh, they must have prized a, uh, uh, the, the other cat, the Tora cat. Sounds similar enough. <laughs> uh, research, Ultra Ball. This is looking mighty fine. They do get a Master Ball. Do they have the rare candy and the energy in order to do it? I forgot how much energy it actually reduces. Oh, sorry, how much energy it, 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 it takes off from its ability with how many benchmark I've got. We're about to find out. So it's one for each, and its attack cost is five. So with three, they need two energy, which means they can't attack this turn. And we could potentially get a one-hit KO. Yeah, I don't know, Chief. I think your message just went up a little bit. Have they played a support yet? Are we going to see a Mila or something? Oh, wait. Have they not played it? They oh, they played Iono. Okay. Well, they have just gotten all of their Littons out. They're, they're in it for the long haul. And they've given me a, a frowny face. An unfortunate situation for them, but a, a very fortunate one for me. Let's bench Zorak here. And I'm going to go for... 
a cheeky Pedov and get the pheasant out. Be really cool to see here this actually come into effect at some point in the game. So, hey, why not, man? And there is that ability, emergency evolution. The pheasant comes out to play. And there you go. Just such an easy stage two to get out. It just makes me wonder what on pheasant EX is going to be. Obviously, it won't be anything broken, right? It, it kind of makes perfect sense. Also, I think I might attach to the unpheasant here. Um, yeah, I kind of want to attack with it as well in this game, just out of curiosity to see... Well, it's not really, well, just to see how it offsets the prize trade and stuff. Also, yes, I do play the one copy of Forest Seal Stone, kind of borrowing from Giratina with the Lost Box, where sometimes you don't want a Phantom Star and instead want to actually go for a Seal Stone, but... Yeah, just an option. That said, still no big barrel. But we do hit 350, which is enough to take a one-hit KO on pretty much anything. And that's two prizes there. And my opponent should be able to hit back pretty hard here. Just kind of why I kind of why I want to just, you know, come with the unpheasant, maybe throw, find another reversal, throw a reversal on it, let it attack, and then just get another Zorak ready to come up with. Or I could go for the uh the opposing wings. Does put some damage on it, sets up Zorak instead of trying to go for that 180 because it'll just remove the energy. So that really could go a long way. Well, actually, it depends though, right? Because if I have four Pokemon in play, then it just still attacks with one energy anyway. So what good is it going to do? Well, I guess it removes attachment for a turn to prevent them from attaching elsewhere. Basically, they're going to just be wanting to attach every turn, right? And so in that case, then if we remove that step, at least back by one, we can get ahead again. Okay, cool. I, I can see what we're doing with this. But it all depends if they even get the thing out. They Arvind, right? So they got Ultra Ball and Defiance Ban, which would be more than enough to take the KO. And I'm assuming they've got Rare Candy in hand then? Or well, they got rid of Defiance Ban without even playing barrel so i'm guessing they have no that means they don't right because then they need to really thin out so what's in their hand that's so important to to get rid of the defiance band hmm, that does leave me curious are they fake out but they're going for paralysis and they got it <laughs> all right fair play man can't even hate that is that is quite funny i can't lie i am going to throw this reversal on pheasant because it does open up that 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 ko play and i also like the idea of just going for iono here oh do i oh that feels bad i can't retreat i have i have two switches in the deck right one's down iono could really screw me over here so but but so would ah let's go for it man i'm gonna oh no screw it they're gonna see cards anyway giving them bigger hand doesn't do anything and me all i've got to do is just great ball and i'll guarantee a big barrel that's fine we got research it's okay let's just get zorak out and we'll have to end our turn unfortunately <laughs> the fake out coming through that's so clutch there's a tora cat and an ultra ball get rid of a puffin and a switch could have used that myself earlier let's be uh the cheeky incineral rare candy here we go baby did they get an attachment? They should attach to the active, knowing what I could do, and they have done that, except I've just remembered I'm actually getting rid of two energy, not just one. So both of that energy is going back into the hand, meaning, yes, they will KO the pheasant, but I can then respond with a KO, and they could be in a tricky situation. Actually, that said, oh, it's it's still awkward, huh? But I could also boss KO at some point. Okay, I think, I think we've taken enough prizes to make it worthwhile. Also, Magma Basin. Now, that's going to get in the way. Um, but thankfully, though, we put the energy in the... Yeah, we, oh, God, that burn is really what does it. We put the energy in the hand instead of discard, so it can't be used there. Oh, BA phone, stop talking to me. And that's an unpleasant promotion. Do I go for the 180? No, I don't go for the 180. I hit 50. That's enough for Zorak. But if I go for 180 now, then I actually can restrict my bench and prevent the one that KO on me. I need to prevent it by one. Oh, but that energy in the hand can go so far for us. Huh. I'm also considering this Alakazam. No, I don't don't think I Alakazam. Actually, no. I'm not going to Alakazam here. I'll just research. Still trying to figure this one out, really. Maybe I'll try and go for the double pheasant. Yeah, let's try the double pheasant here. Oh, no, but that, now I need to get the pheasant back into the deck, right? Because I've got it in hand, ironically. So I think I can bench it. Famous last words? <laughs> Anybody? But also get rid of boss and damage pump, but they're two very valuable cards. I don't want to lose them. I'm thinking I go for the boundless power instead. Oh, but they could just get a boss KO. I have to... Oh, they, but then they could do that anyway. And if they get a boss KO, then I, then I can boundless power again anyway. So I think I think I boundless power. I sent into opposing wings because of the energy removal, but the fact that they could just still attach and attack doesn't change anything, does it? And if they... a uh, Sweet honey! Broski! Doubled! Okay, they got tails. I'm about to say. Because if they boss KO me, I can M160 back in this perfect mass. But that honey would have thrown it off. Thankfully, it didn't. So there's a Greninja down. Interesting to see them play that and not Radiant Zard. I need an Iono. I need, I need to get I need to get my, uh, my cheeky pheasant back in the deck. Oh, they're going to retreat? Oh, they're going to try to come up with a fresh one. Right. But with Code Breaking... Oh, I can't Code Breaking and Gus at the same time. I did also lose... The Counter Capture's not online. I 
Axe is just code breaking for a turbo, and that's like an instant swing. I could also just code breaking anyway, and then just come up with Zorak, take the one prizer out. Oh no, because then I, yeah, no, I'm still not doing it. Which means if I want to get a KO with Zorak, then I need to boss, and then just boss up this, take it out. Unless I boss up a, s oh no, okay, they're coming back with it. I uh, don't know why they retreated then. Oh, they're going for the play that I thought. They're going to boss up Zorak. That means I can just pheasant my way through this, no? I should just get pheasant back into the deck. <laughs> that's what I need to do. And keep the boss as well. Okay, I'm understanding it now. But this is what I like about the pheasant with the, with the Zorak, right? It gives you now an option to go, okay, I'm just going to become a single prize deck now. You're going to have to take two prize cards here to win the game. Oh, they are behind on prizes too. Meaning I, I can get this out and attack with this right away. Oh, that could be huge. Oh, we get the turbo. Not really important. But I can do this play. Damage pump onto the Bidoof. So it actually activates its ability. I think I... Ultra Ball. I need to Iono. Why are you here, man? Get back in the deck. Oh, wait. I know I can do that with Squivet, right? Okay. So, do I code breaking for a Bib Barrel and a boss, right? I can code breaking for Bib Barrel and boss. Yeah, code breaking for Bib Barrel and boss. That way I get Bib Barrel. I can get boss off top deck. I can actually go into the Unpheasant. Okay, we're talking. Bib Barrel and boss's orders. This is why you have the Squivet, man. And then we're just an S dash. Yes. Okay. Straight into the barrel here. We go for the evolution. We then emergency evolution here. Get on pheasant out. Oh no, I've now just removed my boss. Oh, I should I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. It's fine. We'll get we'll get okay. I'm sorry, I did it wrong. I've done it all wrong. Oh no. We'll put this here just in case. And we uh do I retreat? I think I do, because this is online, so why not? Go for the 180, take the knockout. And from there, we need boss for game, which is why I laid the boss. And yeah, uh, the reason I did the Bidove before drawing, idiotically now, is because I didn't want to draw back into the Unpheasant, right? I didn't want to draw back into it. But now I just look like I can look like a dumb dumb. <laughs> Oh, I still have bit, uh, I still have Squibbit and stuff with me, so we, we can still do something here. Right, well, there's the Incineroar. And we get iono which I am not against. In fact, it helps. I've still got two bosses in the deck, so the odds are pretty good. They're on our favor. Uh, I'm getting a bit nervous. And this, is, by the way, is why I attacked with this one, and I needed to get it out, because otherwise I would have to find a turbo. Oh, no, I had turbo, didn't I? So, okay, maybe I didn't have to get that one out. Maybe I'm just a dumb dumb. May I, I basically have potentially lost this game because of my extra steps, but... Come on, tell me something new. Also, forgot that we're on mute because of the stupid bug. All right, Unpheasant, come up. Just need a boss. And it's a top deck. There we go. Unpheasant showing its worth here and now. First game of the recording. And that is beautiful. GG's, my friend. GG. Dialga. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm assuming this is the more recent list. I've been having an absolute, well, I'll say a blast. We have a good time with Dialga recently. Um, that's that's the deck I'm building in real life, by the way. Um, I know I said I'll leave that exclusive to the members, but it's been a while now. But yeah, Dialga is a deck I'm making in real life, and I am really enjoying just the concept of it in general. Um, I've always liked Dialga as an idea. Never really stuck to it or fascinated by it, but with the Matang, it just seems really cool. They do need to find themselves a Poffin, though. Um, and, and the list from uh, Orlando seems to be just the most efficient list because, my god, it kind of just really pop off and it's really cool. But, of course, it's still Dialga, so you still whiff. Um, but, it, honestly, it's like far less with the most recent list compared to the ones before that were being played. It just feels kind of good, so I do enjoy Dialga more. I'd say that's probably my favorite deck right now, at least if you're talking like meta decks. There's a Great Ball. Don't remember Great Ball being in the one <laughs> that we saw earlier in Orlando, but, uh, okay, let's see if it's uh, bears some fruit, and there it is. I, on the other hand, would love, absolutely love to top deck a Gape Jaw Bog, you know? This hand's Screams Gape Jaw Bog. There's an Ultra Ball though. And yeah, I know it's a bit risky, by the way. A lot of you are going to be in the comments saying Gengar. I know. I know. I'm not playing Gengar. I, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a choice. It was a decision. And we'll just see how it pans out. There's a Beldum, the 70 HP one. I'm assuming this is more of an Arvin build because they seem to be in a bit of a struggle for getting their Beldums out. Whereas usually you go for the kind of Poffins out uh, instead of what's going on here. Okay. I oh no, that's nice. I'm going to bench the Dove and I'm going to bench this. And I'm going to attach. I'm just going to, uh, you know, what? I'm just going to play my hand. That's basically what I've just said. I don't know. And I need some bogs, man. I need some bogs in me life. Oh, that's not boggy. No, no bogs. No bogs at all. That's concerning. I can't bench anything really, can I? So what do I go? Do I, do I, do I go into the Bidoof? Yeah, I'm going to have to avoid returning to Bidoof, man, because I'm not finding me Gape Jaw. No way currently to get damage into play. But that said, it's... I've got another turn. I couldn't attack because I was going second, so it's actually not that big a deal. Either way, is, I guess is it worth putting a Mimikyu in the deck? Uh, again, I know this was... Zorak has been... If it has been played, it's been played with, like, Clef Key, um, to avoid Return into to shut off like the Lost Box decks and all these other decks, whilst simultaneously just you know being Zorak and with the maximum melt, Zorak is actually really good because you could just Oko Charizards very comfortably, and of course with the Gape Jaw and the Alakazam, you can move damage around to even get other one hit KOs. Uh, it's still a glass cannon, don't get me wrong, but it is a beat stick in this format, so it's something we shouldn't neglect. Either way, they've got Dialga and they are going to be able to get the KO here with that Metal Blast, and I think I'm going to have to just Iona again which is like a lot of digging through the deck 
That said, I'm not going to shuffle my deck. I'm tempted to, like, play a nest ball. I might want to get the Squivets, really. Oh, it's the Bog! Let's go! All right, there we go. Bit of action. Now I can bench the Squivet a bit more comfortably, but I am just going to Iono because I want to see more valuable cards. I don't want to shuffle and get crap again. There, we should get something. Uh, we go okay, we do. We do. We do get the Zorark. Well, wrong one. Let's get rid of you and you. Let's get that Zorark, and that will give us Phantom Star. Lovely jubbly. Bench the Hisuwayan Zorark V down. Bro said the whole name and everything. Let's move damage counter off that onto the Bidoof. Yeah, we'll just keep it there. Throw that down and then straight Phantom Star. Now I want to see another another pigeon. Oh, I could see another pigeon here. I could go for a pigeon. And I'm going to do it. Screw it. The nest balls are there for like if I need to bench things. Or oh, do I go for Bid Barrel? Oh, I could Bid Barrel later. I want to get my bird out, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me get my bird out, bro. There we go. Damage taken. Emergency evolution. Let's get the pheasant out. There we are. And now you're just chilling. Also, a free retreater. Kind of like that too. Going to move. Do I move on to damage onto the, I don't think it actually matters right now. I think with the max belt, they're already getting a KO with the Star Chronos. They're getting a KO this one, Star Chronos. That's, there's that. I think we just go for the ticking curse now. I don't think that extra 50 or, yeah, extra 50 is going to do anything. Oh, no, it does actually. Doesn't it set up a, it sets up, it sets up an opposing wings, doesn't it? Yeah, it sets up an opposing wings KO. So I have the turbo only. I can still go for the KO, right? Yeah, okay. No, I think that's, I think that's right. I think that's right. He says with reverse energy in hand. I could get Ionode. We don't know. Well, not an Iona yet. There's a Dialga down. Oh, bro, should it be so cool to pivot around this and instead, like, boss KO this, Alakazam onto that. So when they bench again, we can just go for an Alakazam KO for two prizes. That would be really cool. But, you know, it's just a bit silly, isn't it? There is also some sort of case. No, I was going to say there's a case for the opposing wins um, for knockout because instead of bringing energy to discard power that can be rotted back and then matanged into play, it brings it into their hands, but... Then you could just attach for turn and also then conceal cards. So it's actually not a good idea. Nonetheless, are we going to see some Star Chronos action? They've already played Jack, so they can't boss Chronos, which is nice. Meaning at best, uh, sorry, at, well, no, at best, worst, yeah, at worst for me, I can't talk. At worst case scenario, oh, I can move damage onto this. Right, worst case scenario is they, they Chronos and they can only take two prize cards. So that's, that's a good thing. Unless they find Max Belt. But this doesn't seem to be the list that does that. I'd be a bit more, oh, then again, yeah, they, they could be playing Prime Catcher. Ah, yeah, that could be a problem. The older list did play Prime Catcher, and this is looking more like the older version of Dialga. But they have got Star Chronos. But I'll tell you what, if they do do that, Unfeasant's coming out, baby. We're going to start coming out with a, with a with a single prize out. There's the Chronos. Thankfully, they're not actually getting the maximum benefit they could with that. It's really nice. And I'm going to bring up a single prize out. Lovely stuff. But now, my friend, your job is to get this boy charged up. That's for sure. And I am tempted to move damage onto this Belgium, but I think I instead move it onto Dialga because I could whiff and have to hit that... that, that that, that 230 is it, I think. I think it's 230 with the with the four bench Pokemon. Basically, I need to make sure I can want to KO this eventually. The reversal's gone, but it's back. So I'll take that. I would like to double Pheasant though, but that's kind of done right now. But either way, there's the Metal Blast and the Pheasant's going to be taking the KO here, of course. And we have to see what we can do here. Getting punished for not getting that big barrel earlier now. There's a Star Alchemy boy, but I think I might just cut this. I've always, I was trying to be cheeky with it, but I don't think it's actually working. All right, let's bench you and the Maximum Belt might apply to a Mew KO if that ever does come up. So, sure, I'll throw you down. Also tempted to squiv it, but how many Ultra Ball have I got? Yeah, I've got Ultra Ball left. It's not Oh, I'm taking two prizes, actually. So maybe Squivet is actually not a bad shout now. Yeah, because then I, if, if I do get an eligible top deck, I can actually get it off from the prize cards. Okay, that's fine. Oh, wow. Okay, not even punished. Okay. <laughs> Yo, that was the best decision I've ever made. Cheapers, creepers. Right, well, let's great ball. The barrel. Uh, it's Bidoof. I'll take that. In fact, I'll happily bench the Donny. Let's 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 throw that. Don uh, not you. This one. There we go. Oh, and I can even go for counter catcher, but that will still be online next turn. So let's just go for the boundless power with the Unpheasant for the KO, and hopefully. We can get a cheeky boss KO. Well, counter catcher KO, sorry, on that Dialga. So then just kind of completely wipe their board state. Love to see that Cypher Maniac as well. Just need an Ultra Ball top deck now, bro. <laughs> Went from a terrible hand to a great one thanks to this little chest map. Love it. There's Damazenta, of course. That's that. That's their response. But they do need to... They have just promoted this Dialga. Ah, uh, no, it makes sense. Yeah, because if they KO me now, which they could in a fantasy world with, 
if then I come up KO them and then they just KO me with the, the Zamazenta. Um, but how are they doing that? They're only doing 220, so they can't. Hmm, interesting. Maybe instead of Unpheasant, then I should have come up with Zorak and said, right, you have to KO me, otherwise I sweep you. Yeah, I shouldn't have given them the option to KO this Unpheasant to even out the prize trade again. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. But it's an Unpheasant video. I don't care. I want to see the bird fly. Give it some wings. Right, they are charging this Donny up pretty aggressively. Have they done any rods yet, though? There are a lot of energy down. One rod. Again, the list is looking more like the older versions and the rod count was always a bit shaky. People were a little bit too scared to commit to the fourth. Usually you'd see a two or three, but they take a KO here. Then is Iono actually worth it? I guess so. It means they probably won't be able to do any sort of shenanigans to Oko me. But then how do I finish off? The, basically, I'm worried about I need to take four prizes and there's only three available before this thing goes down. So that's my concern. That said, I could always just manually retreat as well to the others or I could things get uh, funky. Yeah, we Iono here. We do Iono here. I am not doing enough to take a knockout. So I do need to bench Jirachi just to have that option. Unless I try and greed it, <laughs> which sounds really stupid. So I think I benched Dorachi just to guarantee this knockout. Yeah, I was trying to play around with because I could move damage and then KO. Oh, man. Do I risk it for a biscuit here? If I, I oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm never punished. Come on. Come on, I just need an Alakazam. Wait, did I discard it earlier? Oh, no, I discarded it earlier. No, I didn't. Okay, I'm just, okay, I'm just panicking. Don't worry. Uh, everything's fine. It's under control. Everything's stay completely calm. I'm going to super rod one bird back. There you go. Everything's, uh, in fact, I maybe should have done two to increase the odds of getting a basic. Please don't punish me for this. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. I'm going to get rid of Arvin and switch, I think. Yep, because that keeps me having the bosses. Am I getting Alakazam? I just, I'm already getting the one at KO here, right? That's already happened. I'm hitting 280 on the dot. No problem. So if I can move. Yeah, 180. If I move 20, sorry, 280. If I move 20 off of this onto the Beldum, it puts pressure on them to evolve the Beldum. Otherwise, I could take a two price turn next turn and win the game that way by just moving off the Zama Center. So I think I've now set myself up for the best possible outcome for winning. It's now, it's in their court. It's in their court. Comeback time. Let's see what we can do. Double boss. Don't let me down, Iono. Come on, give them nothing to work with. They're taking a while to promote. I think they've just AFK'd. I, I have a feeling they just AFK'd and that's that. Donnie's gone ahead and rage quitted. Maybe. Probably not, really. Yeah, okay. They're, yeah, <laughs> they're obviously just going to do nothing and pass. That's what I guess. I think they just walked away. If uh, To be fair, genuine question while we're here. On PDCGL, on the mobile, if you just, like, close the app, does it actually just leave the game? As in, does it just leave it in as in it's being played? Or does it actually scoop the game as in you, as if you close the full application? Because you're not actually closing the application on the phone, right? So if you just uh, just scroll up and then just go to another app or something, then does it just leave it in this state? I mean, it's an automatic win, obviously. And I am going to take it because we fought to get here, my friend. They tried and failed. We caught back up. Yeah, I'd love to know, though. But I'm going to take it because it's, it's fun to take two prices in a turn with a Zorak. It's kind of fun. There it is. There's the pass. They conceded a turn ago. Let's just go for the painful spoons. That Alakazam risk paid off so much because we would not be in this position. But alas, <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, we've taken some risky plays today and every time it's paid off. So I cannot complain at least, at least for tomorrow. All right, at least for tomorrow. GG's though, man. GG's. Good fun. And that is the Zorak Unpheasant, an absolute blast to play with. Of course, you're not going to take down anything too top tier, but as always, who gives a damn? We're here for the laughs. And this, honestly, I think it's a really fun way to play the Unpheasant. Because let's be real, an Unpheasant deck that's just Unpheasant as the main attacker just isn't good enough. And so there you go. Another option for Zorak. Have fun with it and uh, see you later. And a huge thank you to the channel members for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member yourself, click the join button down below to see all the perks and all the tiers where you can get exclusive content and the like. But we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for the support, guys. See you later.